Hello, Tosca. Hello, everybody. I think it is that time. So I'll just let people know we are recording, as you would have heard. And um, there's many people that uh, registered for this session that are um, might be coming on late and also might be in the recording. So just so you know, um, we are recording this session. My name is Amanda and uh, I'm from Shift Recovery. And this is Tosca, also from Shift Recovery. And uh, we're grateful to be here with uh, you all tonight. And we're just, this is very casual. Uh, we're gonna give you a little bit about our stories and um, our program, and then open to any questions, anything like that that you might have. So please feel free if at any time you wanna ask a question or get in there, please go ahead and do that. So um, you are all on here um, as you got uh, an email that was sent out from Brightline Eating and Susan Pierce Thompson, who is um, a, a fellow in, in uh, treating uh, eating disorders and food addictions with us. And um, we're super excited to be partnering with her as she's joining us at, at uh, one of our intensive programs. Um, so I just thought we'd start with Tosca and I are both going to share a little bit about our own stories and why we're sitting here where we are right now. And then we'll go from there. So Tosca, yeah. there Hello. you are. Hello, everyone. There's some uh, there's some before and after pictures for you, so you can see me. I've I'm I'm six feet tall, but I I've uh, lost 110 pounds and been absent for for four and a half years, and I'm just so so grateful. So my story uh, may be a lot like some of yours um, because I actually the my first introduction to food addiction was by reading a book called Bright Line Eating, and um, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. That's totally me, you know? And here I was, uh, I think about 46, 47 years old. And I was just ready to hear this message. And so when I came into Bright Line Eating, I, I, I did the 14 day challenge. I, you know, I had the book, uh, but as a, as a typical addict, I was doing things my own way. So, you know, the four bright lines, I was good with two of them, no flour, no sugar. That made a lot of sense to me, but I'm not crazy enough to need the way and measure things. I'm not that crazy, you know? So, so I had some success for a few months and then um, I had some medical issues and ended up uh, back in the food, right? So now here I am back in the, in the flour and sugar and oof, I could not stop. You know, and this is when craziness really feels bad. I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but knowing the answer, like knowing I needed to stop eating flour and sugar and not being able to was so painful. It was extra painful. And I had, I had actually had ovarian cancer and I was doing chemotherapy and, um, you know, that's a good excuse to get back into flour and sugar. I mean, geez, chemotherapy sucks. So I gained like 40 pounds during that time. Um, and thank God I came out okay. Um, and I could not stop. I was like, when I get done with chemo, I'm gonna stop. And, you know, I got done and I couldn't. And then I'm a teacher, you know, so here I am like when the school year starts, you know, the summer's just too loose, I'll get back on schedule. And I just couldn't. And, um, you know, I was doing this crazy, like I was making a bright line breakfast packing a bright line lunch, going to school, and the bell would ring at three o'clock and my car was driving me to the donut shop. You know, like I couldn't even, I could, a couple of times I would pass it. I'd be like, no, do not go in there. You know, and I just, I just couldn't. I would end up turning around and going back in like pretty much every day. And I would eat, this is sad, but like 20 of those donut holes I was getting every single day. And that was just the beginning of my afternoon slash evening binge. And that went on for a year and a half, you know, and my weight was just going right back up. And um, I got desperate. So I sought out the next level of support, which is just a big, um, I'm so grateful that there, I sought out the 12 step programs. Um, and and uh, I came into one of the 12 step programs and got abstinent with a sponsor with more support. And I'm just so grateful because 
that it was out there. Like I didn't really know about it, you know, and I, just to stumble into it, I felt like I was coming home and I've been abstinent ever since. And, and now, you know, like I, I, my life has revolutionized so much from coming into recovery. It's not just the food and the 110 pounds I lost, but like the shame and the self-hatred and, you know, just the complete like depression about have, being powerless over my life has you know, it, it lifted. So I ended up quitting teaching uh, through some circumstances and, and then um, getting involved in the infact school for food addiction counseling. So here I am, I, I come, I came into shift and I was blown away again by being, and, and I was absent and everything. And, but I came into the, one of these intensives and the the deep inner work that's done. And I was seeking out stuff for emotional sobriety. I didn't even know that's exactly what shit was. So I feel like I've just been the luckiest food addict around to have fallen from one thing into another, into like this higher level of support that really digs deeper than anything I've I've seen, even in the 12 step room. So that's my big story. And I'm just super grateful to be here with you guys. And uh and yeah, just grateful that I, I actually got to meet Susan along the way and Susan mentored me. And so I, you know, I am the luckiest food addict out here. And we get to, um, you know, we get to just join this work with you guys. And, and it's beautiful to watch the miracles happen like they happened for me. And I, I just love it. So that will be it for my little story. I'll pass it on to Amanda. She's got a great story too. Let's talk that. Um, okay. So there's just a few pictures of me and, um, you know, we're going to talk a lot more about the program, but we just wanted to kind of identify in and share with who we are. Um, so as you can see, I was uh, fairly morbidly obese and that's actually how I spent most of my life. Um, and I'm going to take down these pictures because um, it's easier to share. So um, I'm Amanda and I am the uh, director of Shift Recovery now. And um, my journey to be here has been long and hard and also truly amazing. And, you know, my story with food, um, it starts when I was quite young but it really doesn't take off until I'm in my early twenties. You know, I liked food. It was important to me. Um, I was a little bit of a pudgy little girl. Um, and then in high school, I found some other things to distract me, um, you know, and I, I was busy doing those. And then um, in my twenties, life started happening and food became really important to me. And I, knew that food was my problem and no I didn't know that weight was my problem and all I needed to do was get my weight off and I worked really really hard because my whole life's problems was a weight issue and I went on many 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 diets exercise programs um I'd go away even to spas and retreats to to help me with my weight issue and you know the truth is the whole time my weight was actually just getting more and more um and i was still working really really hard and um i i really noticed my depression was kind of ratcheting up same time and um when i hit my 30s was when it really things were getting pretty serious you know with my weight and i i remember um getting pretty desperate. And I really thought I would tried everything and I'd spent thousands and thousands of dollars on all the different programs over the years. And whether it was, you know, medication, this diet, that diet, Weight Watchers, Cabbage Soup Diet, Jenny Cray, like all of these ones I'd done. And I just would always think, yeah, it's just, I don't have very strong willpower. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? I can't stop from putting the food in my mouth. And 
many days I'd wake up and say, okay, today's the day, Amanda. And, you know, I was never one of those really good dieters. Many people that I chat with are fantastic dieters. They've gained and lost, you know, hundreds of pounds in their life. That was not me. I was never a successful dieter. So I laugh when anyone comes to me and says, oh, you know, can you give me dieting advice? I'm like, no, I still can't. That is not my thing. I, I'm not a good dieter. I failed at everyone I did. So please don't come to me for that. Um, and then uh, in my early 30s, this, you know, weight loss surgery was kind of coming up. It was the thing. I'm Canadian. I live in Canada. I was in Vancouver and um, there was no coverage for them, but um, the lap band was the thing that was out there at that point in time. And so I went for the appointment and I remember the doctor saying to me, well, yeah, and after your lap band, you're just going to eat half a teacup. Those were his exact words. I can picture where I was standing in his office and I was just like, okay, sounds good to me. And um, I had no money and I had to get my older sister co-signed a loan for me to get this lap band surgery. And I went in to get the lap band surgery. And um, I remember the night before I had a big celebratory, huge meal with my friends and I got the surgery and in the first three weeks, I think it's three weeks, you can only have liquids. And I lost 25 pounds. That is the only weight I ever lost with that weight loss surgery. Um, and at that point in time, that surgery, I had a loan out on it for almost $30,000. And I never lost any weight because I couldn't follow the diet. I could not stick to what they had told me to do. And as a matter of fact, I so couldn't stick to it that I, I was making myself very, very ill because I was eating things that I couldn't and it would get stuck. And it was just quite a mess. The next five years were, were, were pretty messy. And then it had to be, the surgery had to be undone through emergency surgery because I, I caused such a, such a mess in my, in my stomach. And, you know, by this time, I'm about, I'm close to 300 pounds by this time. And I, I'm getting told that I am pre-diabetic and I go again and I'm pre-diabetic and now you have high cholesterol and you have high diet, you know, your um, uh, high blood pressure. And I would go and I would hear all these things. And I just would always feel so much shame because I just, my whole problem was that I had no willpower and in my mind, I was just a weak, weak human that couldn't, I couldn't stop eating. And I tried a lot of different programs as well. You know, I did a lot of mindful eating and intuitive eating. I went to therapy, um, well, well-meaning practitioners. And my weight just went up and up and up and up. And, um, then I finally got diabetes and I was now giving myself needles every day, taking medications every day. My life was kind of getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And food was, I wouldn't have called that. I wouldn't have called it this at the time, but food was my master. Um, and however, I was still very functional. I had a job, quite a, quite a good job. And I'd go to work every day. And, but the rest of my life was just quite small. Um, I went to a treatment center, um, and I was there for 30 days and it was the same kind of stuff. A lot of, um, mindful eating, intuitive eating. Uh, we did, you know, different art therapy. Um, I did see therapists every day. We did a lot of talking. Um, and I came home a month later and really nothing was different. Um, my food was still the same, except at that meeting, someone had said to me, one of the therapists had said, um, why don't you try going back to the 12 steps? I'd been in the 12 steps um, and I had gone to uh, Overeaters Anonymous, which is a 12 step program for food. And I didn't like it. I wasn't one of them. There was a lot about the program I wasn't interested in doing. And um, I just wanted their diet. And um but she kept at, 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 um, encouraging me to go back. So I did go back. And the good news is for me is that I've never left since then when I went back. But in that OA room and in my life, nothing was changing in my life. I was continuing to get larger and larger and more miserable and more miserable and more miserable as I was desperately trying to seek out things. And I, um, 
I was reading books and diet. And then um, at this point in time, I was a drug and alcohol addiction counselor. And um, I found a place online that trained professionals to work with people that were struggling with food. And I was like, oh, perfect. I'd like to add that to my my repertoire. I don't know what I was thinking here. I was probably, I mean, I think I was about 325 pounds. And anyways, so the very kind gentleman I talked to was like, you know, I actually think that you need to go for treatment. And I didn't like that very much, but I was like, oh, okay. And that was then called ACORN. And uh, you're, you'll hear in a few minutes that shift used to be called ACORN. So I um, took some time off work, not much time because I barely had any money and I didn't have really any time and I was single and had to pay my own bills, but I took some time and I went to um, Florida and I went to this intensive, which is what where Susan's going to be at with us. Um, and I will tell you that I walked in there 10 years ago and I've been abstinent and in recovery ever since. And things I know now that I didn't know then was that I finally was treated for the disease that I had. My obesity, my depression, my diabetes were all symptoms of addiction, which what I had is, was addiction. And so for me, I needed a lot of structure and support around it. And that's why all the diets, um, all the other things that I had done weren't working because they were treating my symptoms. And one of my symptoms was weight. That's what got me desperate enough. And then, you know, diabetes and all the other health issues. And um, so I went for treatment. I went to this intensive, which at the time was only five days. There was no aftercare. And I was like five days, I really into myself. I was like, what's this gonna do? I mean, I've been battling this all my life and I've been working really hard. Um, and so I got on um, a sober food plan. If any of you are following Bright Light Eating, it's kind of similar, very along the same lines, you know, get, getting rid of the foods that I was addicted to. Um, and that was only one part of it though. And many other programs, including Brightline Eden, they do that part of it. What I needed though is that was my solution to my life. You know, my food made me feel better. It gave me ease and comfort. Um, we take that away and I got to learn how to live in this world. I got to be in this world without needing to soothe myself with food. So thus started my recovery journey of healing the rest of my life, which is what, um, the intensives are all about. It's about getting abstinent, which I got there. And I remember on my last day, I said to everyone there, I said, this is great, you guys. This was a great program. I'm glad I came. There is no way I'll do that when I walk out the door. I remember saying food is my best friend. I actually don't want to live my life without it. And, um, but what I can tell you is that one day at a time, you know, for the last 10 years, I have, uh, followed that program. And, you know, yes, I've lost over half my body size. Um, I don't have diabetes. I don't have high cholesterol. I don't have high blood pressure. Those are miracles. And I get to move my body and, you know, I'm healthy, but far more importantly is that I don't have the self-loathing, the self-hatred. Um, I don't have those things. And I have a new way of being in the world so that I don't have to go back to the food. Um, and so really I can say nothing in my life today is the same as it was, as it was 10 years ago. Um, and that's kind of brings me to where I am right here is that once I, I went to ACORN, um, I knew I needed to be around that program. So I, I kept going, I was volunteering for them. And then I started working for them at the same time I was working for the drug and alcohol treatment center. And then, um, I went full-time with ACORN. Um, and then five years ago, I purchased the business and um, it is now called Shift. And uh, that stands for sobriety, hope, freedom and transformation. And um, I'll just say a little bit um, that uh, Incorn um, has been around for over 30 years and it came out of a, there was a hospital called Glen Bay Psychiatric Hospital that had a food addiction wing um, and that closed down. All the funding was was uh, pulled from it. 
So just over 30 years ago, um, two of the, one of the uh, people that worked there and one of the alumni um, started this program, this intense, and it's basically been running for over 30 years. And um, we have had thousands of people go through this program. Um, and as I say, we, um, I purchased it uh, five years ago and we've kept the, the basis of the program and we've added a lot. The program is now, um, and a 12 week program, it's an eight day intensive with a, with an 11 week aftercare. And we will talk all about that. So that's who I am. That's how I got to be sitting here. Tosca, is there anything else you want me to say about that before I move on? Uh, no, I always love hearing your story though. It's, whew, it's yeah. quite intense. Ah, okay. So I'm going to share the screen again. So again, um, those of you that, that have just joined us, this is being recorded. Um, there's many people that will, this will get sent to that want it. And please just jump in. If you have any questions or anything you want to ask, just jump on in. So there again are uh, my photos. Okay. So the next, oh, uh, Marion, if I'm saying your nickname right, go ahead. Um, I have questions. You'll probably answer them, but can I ask them anyway? Go ahead and answer them and I'll let you know if we're going to come and if we're going to come back, then. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> does insurance cover the program at all? Insurance does not cover our program right now. Okay. Then um, if we're traveling from the United States to England, how much time do you recommend before the program to get into England so that we're like in a place to focus? Perfect. So, so Marion, I will definitely be covering these things at the end. We'll be these are fantastic questions, and we'll we'll talk about the those logistical things at the end. Is that okay? Yeah, the rest of mine are also logistical. Oh, except Perfect. deposit refundable. We will get to all of that stuff, and if okay. I don't get to them at the end, just come back and ask me. We'll okay. we can cover that off. So, great questions. Thank you. I just want to cover. Yeah, you're welcome. Just very briefly, a couple things that we like to share. Um, with people that um, when we're working with people, we see three different types of types of eaters come to us, what we call a normal eater, which I hate that term, but you know, because what is normal, but it's the best we got, the emotional eater and the food addict. So the normal eater is the person that I was trying to be treated for all my life. It's a person that has a weight issue, usually it could be underweight, mostly it's overweight. And they believe and the practitioners believe the problem is only physical they need to lose weight okay so um they might go to their doctor and you know maybe they've got their high cholesterol is creeping up their doctor says to them you know what we're gonna you need to do the old calories in calories out program uh, so we're going to give you this diet we're going to give you an exercise program we're going to give you support and then what works for that person is willpower. They need willpower to follow that program. They needed education and then willpower. Their problem was physical, it was weight, okay? And that is what, oh, 85% of the, pro that's the diet industry, the health industry, the exercise industry. That's what this category is all about. And it works well. You know, Weight Watchers is a beautiful program for people in this category. Right line eating is a beautiful program for people in this category and some of the other categories, but this is a fantastic category if that's what your issue is. If we've tried all of those things, okay, we need more support. The next one is emotional eating or eating disorder. There's also a fair amount of um, treatment out there for eating disorders. The problem for these folks is physical and mental. So they might have a weight issue, but they the, what they're eating over is problems. They're eating over trauma. They don't know how to be in their life with their feelings. We don't know, we don't have life skills. So instead of having our feelings, we pick up the food. So what do these people need? What's their solution? They need to develop skills to cope with feelings other than eating, purging, restricting, binging, right? We often need to resolve past emotional trauma. And they also will need physical. They might need a plan, a food plan, um, and um, an exercise program. Um, and so what works for these folks is moderate eating. Moderate eating, they can eat everything in moderation, which we've all heard that, eat everything in moderation. Okay, so I did all of these categories. 
that didn't work for me. The next is when we're in addiction. So addiction is actually now we have a brain disease. We are chemically dependent on certain substances. The most common substances is flour, sugar, and sometimes volume for people, um, which if you're following any of the Bright Line Eating, I know you hear those as well. And there are some others. Sometimes it can be grains. There are a few other things for people. So once we get into this category of addiction, there's a couple things that need to happen. And I'm actually going to uh, move on to this next slide here because um, it really talks about addiction well. So addiction, we call this the roundabout, the dilemma of those of us that have tried the normal eating in the diet route, tried the emotional eating, you know, intermittent fasting, eating in moderation, mindful eating, it hasn't worked. Okay, is addiction present? Here's the deal with addiction is that there's two parts to addiction that must be treated and they need to be treated simultaneously and rarely are they. So the first side is the physical component and the physical, what that means is when we ingest any substance that we're addicted to, and this could be sugar, this could be flour, this could be alcohol, this could be nicotine. They act the same in the brain if we're addicted to them once we eat them, we run a very good chance that we will not be able to stop eating them because something happens physically in our body and we have a physical craving. So that's why for those of us that have tried to put stuff down, like we're on a diet and we're moderating, but yet we're still eating these substances, it's almost impossible for us to stop. We have to keep eating them. Now, there will come a time often for many of us where it's like, okay, I'm done. I'm not going to eat this anymore. And we go on a diet. And maybe we even stop. Like for some of you, if you have followed Bright Line Eating and you really have put down the sugar and the flour and the volume, then inevitably we may pick up again. Why do we do that? This is because the second part of addiction, there's this mental component, very much like the emotional eater. And what that is, is that we have reactions to life. You know, we get irritated. We get, our, we get uh, resentful, angry, sad, fearful. And we call it our emotional barometer. Our emotional barometer fills up with all these feelings. And literally what happens in the brain of someone that's addicted is we hit this boiling point when our emotional barometer is rising. We don't even know what's happening. And our mind tells us, oh, Eating a piece of cake, you know, eating ice cream, eating off my food plan is a good idea. Not only is it a good idea, it's the only idea that's going to help me right now. And it's no problem. I'll just be able to go back on. And literally, I will tell you this mental obsession, we, we, we don't have a choice in this once we've hit that. So there's two places we lose choice, this mental obsession and this physical craving if we're ingesting our substances. So if we're dealing with addiction, we put down our substances, which many of you may have if you're doing bright line eating. And if you haven't followed the full bright line eating program or you haven't had all the support you need, you don't have another solution to life, to living life. So your emotional barometers fill up. We hit this mental obsession that we don't even know that's happening and our voice, our addictive voice sounds so, makes so much sense. Oh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to have this one bite. It's Friday. I need to celebrate. Oh, I had a hard day. I'm just going to have some ice cream. This is no big deal. Oh, I'm going out for dinner tonight. Whatever it may be. Ludicrous if we look at, for me, if I looked at all the stuff that happened in my life, but I can't see it at those points. So that's addiction. And that was the, when we were looking at the, this slide, this is what addiction is. This is what um, the third category that we often see with people. And that's the people um, that we work with at Shift, people that are mid to late stage food addicts. And that's the program that we've created for them. So let's just move forward here. Okay, so now I'm just gonna talk briefly about the intensive and what this is all about. So as I was saying, we have been um, 
running the intensives for over 30 years and we have done some changes. So we um, made them eight days. Now we have an 11 week aftercare program. So it's over a hundred hours of treatments that we're providing. And um, we're partnering with uh, Susan on this next one. She's coming to speak with us for a day um, in the UK. We also run them in Florida. Um, they'll be, um, we also run them virtually. So we have Florida virtually, and we're doing this one in the UK. And um, the idea of an intensive, intensive is that we get abstinent, meaning we physically are free of all our substances. Some of us need to go through a detoxification stage, which can be, can be hard to do on our own. So you do that. And then we very quickly learn some basic recovery skills. We kind of start the emotional, mental, spiritual healing. We walk you through that. Um, that's what we do in the eight days. Um, and then, and you've got food plans there. We have a cook for you. If you're in person, um, it's in a home. We run, we have groups, we have process groups together. Um, some of them are learning. There will be um, lecture ones like Susan's doing. Um, and then by the time people go home, they, you have a very clear food plan. And then you have an aftercare plan. And your aftercare plan consists of one group a week a one-on-one -on -one session with one of our counselors every week um, and a daily email check-in as, as well as you have an incredibly supportive uh, community that's been with you. Um, and the other thing with, with shift is that we're, we're quite, I think those of you, if you're connected to bright line eating, there's quite a family in bright line eating. There's quite a family in the shift community, very, very strong fellowship community, um, so it's not just the people that will be at your intensive. The, the intensives are, will be 14 or less people. Um, so they're quite a small group of people. Um, but there's, you know, hundreds of people that are, that are, that are in the fellowship that can be um, incredibly supportive. So that's what you do at the intensive. Um, we just finished one here in Florida. I'm still in Florida right now. Um, we just finished one and it's, Every time I'm part of one of these intensives, it's just, it's unbelievable. People walk in with not very much hope. And, um, you know, people are three weeks out today. They've been abstinent. I just ran one of their aftercare programs today, this afternoon. And they're, they're just beautiful programs. And so they're led by two um, addiction counselors. I will be at the one in, in the UK. Um, and then Barney who has been treating uh, addiction for over 20 years, will be there as the other facilitator. He lives in England um, and uh, we'll have a house manager, a cook, and um, Susan will be there as, as one of our, our speakers. So that's kind of a real, really big um, view of an intensive. Um, and so I'm gonna stop sharing here. And we're gonna to get to some of your questions. Um, a couple of things I just wanna say um, is that there's a couple next steps for those of you. Um, we, uh, there, there has been a fairly overwhelming amount of people that have come and checked in and, and asked us questions. Um, and so there is, um, there's 14 spots in, in the UK. There are some spots left. Um, and then we do have a schedule that there's some, you know, in person in Florida and virtual happening throughout the rest of the year. Um, and what we're, we're going to strongly suggest that all of you do is um, we do free consultations. And um, on those, it's much more personal. Like we want to hear a little bit about your story. We want to make sure that this is the right fit for you. And if it's not, we absolutely can recommend some other things. Um, you know, our, our real passion here is that people just get support and help, whatever that may be, whether it's through us at shift or something else. Um, and then we can answer some more one-on-one -on -one questions. So, uh, Tosca is going to put in the link, how you can, um, sign up for those. And it um, the consults are done by Tosca or myself. And so you'll definitely get one of us. So that will go there. Uh, we also have, um, something called a shift strong call, um, which is calls there. We do free four free phone calls a week, not phone calls, there's Zoom meetings a week, um, where anyone in the shift community can jump on there. There's anywhere from 15 to 40 people on them and people just join in and get support. Um, and you are more than welcome to join those calls and you can ask questions like, do I fit in this community? Is it the community in want? I'm looking forward to getting a, 
uh, I, I'm looking um, into getting an intensive. Do I want to join that? And so we will send you information for all of those as well. And you are more than welcome to join those. Um, Tosca will also put the link in here about um, how to register. So a couple logistical things I will go over and then any other questions, we, we will open them up. And again, if, they, if the questions are um, getting too specific, um, we might we can talk to you one on one. Um, excuse me. Um, and we're always, you know, Renee at the office has been with us for 15 years and, and she's really helpful. So this next intensive that we're talking about is in the UK. It's in a, um, a town on the south coast called Margate. And um, we can, you know, the, the airport you want to fly into is into Gatwick. And we're not, we don't need to spend a lot of time on that stuff tonight because we will send you all that information if you're interested in it. But it is Gatwick, is, which is the airport you want to fly into. And if people do have long flights, you know, so it's um, depending on what time zone you're in, but yeah, you, you probably want to go um, a day or two early are the, we don't start ever until the evening. So we start this on May the 20th, I think, is that right, Tosca, May 20th? Uh, yeah, so Monday, May 20th, we will start at 6 p.m. So just know that we will start at 6 p.m. on that night. Um, and, um, and then we go right through until 2 p.m. on the last day. We provide everyone with their travel food home. Um, the, uh, we are in a um, beautiful old home in England. Um, as I say, we will have a cook there. And the, um, so the fees, insurance does not cover this as food addiction is not in uh, the DSM. Uh, yet that's the uh, uh, manual that the insurance company use in the medical world to cover these. One of the things Susan and I together are at a conference in England just before this um, a consensus conference on and it, it, there's a group of us rallying to get this in the DSM. It's not in there yet. Insurance can't cover it. And it wouldn't cover it anyways for those of you that are Americans and are going to the UK, but it's not covered right now anyway. So um, there is a de deposit required. Um, the deposits are non-refundable. And I, when I say this about money, I just want to say this to you. We are incredibly reasonable about money. We will work with people around payment plans and we can't, if we can, what we'll say to people, um, with the, the deposit is that, um, we, if you can use it up to a year in some other event, um, but it's just, it's really hard for us if people are, you know, because there's very few spots in these. Um, but we will work with you the best we possibly can around money. We we really, um, we simply go above and beyond what we really should do as a business for helping people with this. And um, and so I'll just say that. Um, I'm going to open it up to questions again, or Tosca, if there's anything else you want to say. And Marion, if there's anything else I didn't answer of yours, please just jump on in, let us know. Tosca, anything you want to say before we open uh, it up? Just, I just wanted to note that I put um, the links into the chat. So if you needed to check out um, and sign up for a free consultation, I would definitely suggest doing that because, um, you know, here you are hearing our story, but the best way to find out if you're a good fit for this is for us to hear from you as well and um, to really see what your journey has been up to this point. So, you know, it's a free 30 minute consultation and you can just click the link and, and book that and that you can do that right now if you want. Um, the Shift Strong meetings, the link is there. Um, it, it'll give you all the time zones and everything. So it doesn't go into London time. So you'll have to figure that one out on your own, but it does, it has all the US time zones. It's four times a week. So it's, it really is beautiful. I think the next one is well, there's one actually right about now some Wednesday night, but then the next one is Saturday. There's one Saturday, Saturday morning. morning and they are powerful. If you do nothing else, just join the shift strong community. It's a powerful, powerful community of people that are very supportive. And like, and Tosca said, really book one of those consults there. It's really helpful for us to hear a bit about you and, and we really will guide you and, and we'll let you know if we were to think there's some wasn't a program for you. And, you know, like some people just know right away that, that they're a fit, but it's really there and it is free. So, okay, we will stop talking and uh, 
Tosca and I could talk all day about this. So any questions, anything specific you want to ask? Anything up for anybody? Chris. Thank you so much for all the information. You have answered most of the questions that I had written down prior to the beginning of this. And one that remains, it's not a burning question, but given intensives in Florida, in the UK and online, about how many does that equal in a, in a given year? About how many times is there some kind of an intensive available? Oh well, yeah, good question. So we run approximately, first of all, this is our first one in the UK. This is brand new for us in the UK. Okay. So we haven't done that before, right? Part of it is because we are in, we're doing this, Susan and I are both at this conference and then Barney, one of my counselors lives there. So it just kind of, we're like, okay, this makes sense. Let's do this. So, mm -hmm. so this is our first one in the UK. Um, we normally do about six to eight a year. It really depends. Um, and we have, we used to do a lot more um, because a lot of our alumni would come back to the intensive. And I'll tell you, there's a couple of reasons about that. One was there was not as strong a recovery rate um, before we added in the longer intensive and the aftercare. Um, that was one. But a lot of the, our, our alumni would just come back because they wanted to do extra emotional work and get more support even if they were absent. And we have a lot of alumni programs. A lot of, we do a lot of, of support. We do a lot of emotional sobriety. We do relapse prevention. We do work on thought inquiry. We do the 12 steps. So we, we, there's a lot of programs that our um, alumni can do now. Um, and so they're not showing up at the intensives as much. Although one or two normally do, which is beautiful because it's amazing to have our alumni there. So that's a long answer to your question, Chris, which was how many, it's about six to eight a year. So this year we have left, four or five left we have this year. Four or five left we have this year, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Anyone else? Anything else you want to share with us or questions you want to ask? For those of you that have joined us late, don't worry. You will, uh, this has all been um, filmed and recorded. Um, not filmed. It's all been recorded. So you can listen to it and get all the information. And again, um, Tosca has put in the chat uh, a link to sign up to a free consult. Um, which is just, it can be a little bit more personalized. And if there's any information um, you know, that you want to give us one and one, you can do that. Chris, is your hand still raised or did it raise again? Okay, no, that's okay. I just didn't know. I just didn't know. Hey, Anyone else? Yeah, Leah, hi. This is Marion. Oh, oh Marion, sorry, I saw Leah's hand. Go ahead, Marion. Oh, well, Leah nope. can go. Marion, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, um, do we take the train from Gatwick to Mar Margate? You can take the train or you can Uber from Gatwick to Margate. Do you live in the UK, Marion? No, I live in St. Louis. Oh, you're in St. Louis. Oh, okay, okay. You just were talking about it so casually. Do we take the train? I'm like, oh, she knows what she's talking about. I um, went to school in England for a semester. Okay, so you do know. And we will all that, we have a very detailed piece of information that um, can be sent to you in an email that has those exact but yes you can take the train or you can uber we're quite close um the, the house my understanding is fairly is fairly close to the uh to gatwick much closer than it is to heathrow oh okay yeah and the other ones they'll all be in your um information i think and i just signed up for the free consultation oh beautiful beautiful yeah, and please ask us if we don't, we're not giving you the information that you need, we're, we're, um, we'll give it to you. And as I say, Renee at the office, she's the one that, you know, takes care of all these logistics and um, she is highly organized. So we, we have, we've written those all out. So those are good questions. Okay. Aaliyah. Yeah. Hi, Amanda. Thank you. Hi, for, Leah. I thank you for sharing your story and I have, uh, I have, uh, um, my, I've had an eating disorder and food addiction both. And, um, so I have a comment and then a question. 
my comment is what when you described I, I went for intensive treatment for the eating disorder um, and I still had food addiction afterward like you were talking about but I also needed the treatment for the eating disorder as well and um, what I what in your description of the eating disorder um, I would just add, I mean it's it doesn't seem totally complete to me in terms of um, that people with eating disorders actually think they're fat when they're like um, dying from being so skinny, but it's an actual distortion of um, in your mind. So you yeah. know what I mean. So it's a little yeah, bit body more... dysmorphia. Well, I don't know. I yeah, maybe yeah. That's what I mean, it's I called. That's what it's called. Oh, okay, but I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. People die because they won't eat anything because they think until they keep starving until they're dead and yeah. um so, so there's a little bit more to it than what you described in there but um i'm not trying to criticize you i'm sorry no, thank you. Just, yeah no there is I a just, lot more to it than i'd put in there a lot more yeah. to all of them you're absolutely right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i was in 10 years of treatment for it so it was pretty serious um but um now, um, BLE seems like really good. And I'm just wondering, what do you see as the differences between BLE and um, shift recovery? Because um, I don't, I went to OA for years and that didn't work for me. And, and it's based on the 12 step program. And mm -hmm. is it, so it seems as if you guys do the 12 steps um and then BLE doesn't and I'm wondering is that true or like you know going through each step and all that stuff whereas I don't think that's part of BLE so what what do you what do you yeah very good question Leanne thank you for your for pointing out and you're absolutely right by no means are those slides you know uh, conclusive of what all those different um eating disorders, because they all are. They're, it's not exclusive at all. It's was just kind of a snapshot. So you're absolutely right. And it is incredibly serious. So if it seemed like I was um, insinuating that an eating disorder and emotional eating was not serious. That, that was not my intention. And many people have both. It's very, very, very common. The issue is that as long as addiction is present, we must treat that first or not even first, at the same time as we're treating the eating disorder. Otherwise, we can't get nearly the amount of healing. So what's the difference between bright line eating and shift? Very good question. One of the biggest things is shift is much more intense and there's a lot more support in it. We take a much deeper dive. Um, and what, what I would say, and, and Tosca can chime in too, is that people that are mid to late stage food addicts tend to need a lot more support than people that are, you know, earlier stages of food addiction or emotional eaters, um, which is basically what Brightland Eating was designed for. And um, so it's, it's a much deeper dive, um, a lot more professional support. And um, so just to touch on the 12 steps. So Brightland Eating was actually designed after the 12 steps. Um, you know, that's very much a part of, um, of Susan's life and bright line eating. And yes, we do a lot of the 12 step work. And I think what, what we'll often find with people is that if they're not doing the physical, if they're not physically sober and doing the 12 steps at the same time, it's never going to work. And depending on how they're being taken through the 12 steps, there's a lot of miscommunication about how we work those steps. Um, it can be really tough, but we can't do one without the others. If I'm continually continuing to pick up my substance and put it in my body, I'm not going to be able to heal through the 12 steps or through therapy. And our program is all three of those. We are physical sobriety for the therapy, for the emotional struggles, emotional healing, and the 12 steps for our mental and our spiritual. It's kind of all combined together, which is the same as bright line eating. We're just a more intense more structured program. That would be the difference. Pasca, what, what do you say about that? Um, I would say that Brightline Eating, and Susan will talk about this herself in a lot of blogs, is that the, the crystal vaser 
that she refers to if you've watched her vlogs of someone who's never broken and can can just maintain like the program works beautifully and i know she she's pushing people to you know to do the 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 work the program not just the diet it's not just a diet right but um and she's got um uh, Everett Considine working with the internal family system, the parts work. So she's pushing people to that. And once you're not a crystal baser anymore and you get in this thing, like a, like people might say a chronic relapser, like we just need more help. And there's no shame to it. It's it's a disease. And, and we just, when you're not a crystal baser, you just need more help sometimes. And so, I, you know, uh, that's, this, this is definitely like, just like Amanda described, like so much more support um, just within, you know, like having a spot, just it's more support than the 12 step rooms with a sponsor and meetings. It's just, it's a community, it's professional and it also is abstinent food, just like right So um, yeah. Amanda, you say BLE was meant for people that, we're not in the late stages. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed that. It was meant for people who weren't as uh, chronically food addicts. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, and as Tosca said, you know, as, as Susan calls them, the, the crystal vasers. So what we find, people that are mid to late stage addicts in general or food addicts, they need more support. So people that are unable to get, um, to keep bright on their bright lines, if you will, to use that language, people that are unable to consistently do that, chances are it's nothing to do with you as people. It's not your fault. It's that you need a higher level of support, um, which, and, you know, Susan absolutely agrees. And that's why we're, you know, we, we all work together on these things, different stages of, of, of our, um, of our struggles with food. So it's just people that if you're struggling, if you're doing really well on that program, you don't need shift. I mean, great, you can come, but you don't need it. You know, like if that program is working for you, beautiful. It's a beautiful program. If you're struggling and need more support, we're that next level. Like there's all these different levels and we're that next level. That would be the difference. And what would you consider struggling with BLE? Like eating flour and sugar or? Well, not cause... keeping your, whatever, not keeping your bright lines are. Like they've got pretty clear bright lines. So if you can't keep those consistently in my, that's what I would call struggling. Everyone, that's everyone, that's everyone's journey on their own. But that's what I, but for me, when I tried so many different things, I called myself struggling because I couldn't follow whatever the program was. So if you are unable to consistently follow the program for a long period of time, that would be struggling. Well, I would like to also, I would love to also know when you have future ones because I may not be able to go to this one in May. Uh, you know, absolutely, yeah. And so we, everyone that signed up for this, uh, we will be sending out an email that okay. has all that information and easy links for you to find. Oh, okay. Thanks, Thank Leah. Uh, Marion, did you have another question? I did. Um, do you recommend a a specific twelve step food program after shift? Wow, that's the million dollar question, Marion. Um, so here's the thing. We're not affiliated with any of the specific 12-step food programs. We actually talk a fair bit about the different ones in there and what goes on. Here's, here's what I can tell you is that if you have a solid foundation, then any of the food programs can work. And you're asking the question, so it makes me feel like you, you're knowledgeable about these. You, you know the differences. Um, you, when by the time people leave shift, you will have a sponsor, um, a shift sponsor. Uh, we will take you through the whole 12 steps. It's the therapeutic model through the 12 steps. Um, and so again, the there's OA, which you know can be a lot of a struggle for people. There's not a lot of support, unless there is, and that's a funny thing to say. And then the other ones have stronger support. So we have many people that are in How, many people that are in FA, we have many people that are in Gray Sheet, and we have many people that are in, in OA. Um, so we don't recommend one. What it often will work out for people is you'll get a sponsor, you know, wh where's that sponsor going? People talk about the meetings. A lot of people go to the Vision for You meetings. 
And I'll say that if you get on the Shift Strong calls, the free Shift Strong and talk to the community, they'll start talking about the 12 step meetings that they go to and they can recommend some to you. So we do talk a lot more about this because it, it can it's kind of a it's kind of a minefield that question. <laughs> and uh, and it's a very good question. It's a very good question. OK, thank you. Yeah, Chris. Oh, uh, Chris, you're muted. This takes us slightly to a different place, and it's more about the intensive experience itself, those eight days. Um, somewhere wow. on, online on, on your website, as I was looking around, I think I came across a, a sample daily schedule during the intensive. And I'm mm -hmm. not looking at it right now, but my memory is that things start around seven in the morning and go until about 10 at night with some breaks in between does is is that an accurate picture i'll give you absolutely i'll give you a rough idea about what it looks like um so there is um people do uh it's kind of a morning routine together and again it's about 7 or 7 30 um a gentle walk outside meditation um and then we do what's called gentle breakfast the breakfast is out people eat to eat together we do some readings um, and then there's a bit of a, about an hour break. And then we have morning group. And again, these times can change half an hour either way, but kind of about 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. There's a morning group. And then we have a 90 minute break where people have lunch and they do what they want to do. And then we have an afternoon group, which is about two and a half hours, goes from about um, 1.30 to 4. And then there's a, a writing time where the house is on quiet. People are writing, they're doing assignments. Um, and then that is followed by a dinner break, about another 90 minute break. And then we have a shorter two hour group in the evening, which is just a, people are checking in, we're, we're start people on doing, you know, evening clothing routines. Um, and no, so that ends about 8.30, not 10 PM, 8.30. Um, and you might've read, we, we, we um, suggest the house goes on quiet between 10 and 10.30. Doesn't mean people have to be in bed, but so we end at 8.30. Um, so it okay. is an intense schedule. That's a um, relief though. The 8.30 other than, as opposed to the 10 makes a big difference. So. It does to me too. You know, it's almost my bedtime right now, Chris. It's almost my bedtime right now. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, so yes. And it is, I will say though, this is not a restful week. Like right. it, it's an amazing, an I mean, intensive, it is a life. It is. So, so it, it, people are tired. People are yeah. tired and, you know, you're not in your own bed. And so, but yeah. yes, but we end at 8.30 um we end group at 8 30. yeah okay. thank you yeah and, you know that's give or take and the groups are um sometimes there'll be like a, a lecture there'll be process work we'll be sharing our assignments we'll be talking about food plans we'll talk about the big book different things like that yeah and again if you go to one of the shift strong calls the community and ask these questions you know you can ask and people will be on there you know literally we just finished one um, two weeks ago. So people are just coming out of it. And um, they, you know, they, people love to talk about their program and their recovery because their lives, I'm sure just like bright line eating are amazing. So they're pretty generous with their time and their questions. And um, I always think it's important that people get information from, from fellows rather than, you know, those of, I have my own opinion. Although for me, I will say I, this is where I went for my recovery. So I, I really, you know, it was much different then. So I do understand it, but yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Any other questions? Okay. So as I said, um, there are still a few spots left in the one in the UK. Um, and we highly recommend you sign up for one of the consults. I think some of you have done that. That's great. And you'll be talking to Tosca or I. Um, highly recommend you get on the Shift Strong calls. They're free. So the consults and the Shift Strong calls are free. So, and they just, they just help you and give you more information. Um, and this will be on video so you can play it back. You will also get a follow-up email with all of these links plus the link to our website. Our website is, is pretty straightforward, foodaddiction.com. We are lucky, we, we, we got that uh, many, many years ago. It, literally, you know, we've been around for, for over 30 years. So 
We have a well-trodden path doing what we're doing. Uh, all of our facilitators, by the way, are uh, recovering addicts, recovering food addicts, every single one of them. Um, not everyone in the back of the house office, but in the front, the, the people on the ground are all recovering addicts, uh, recovering food addicts. So we're, we're right there with you all. Um, so you'll get a follow-up email with all the information that you need. You've got the link to sign up for the consult. Um, we are doing this info session again on Saturday. So if you have anyone um, that wants, that you think would be, um, wants this information, let them know that they can sign up for this. It'll, it'll basically be the same or could be different questions. So who knows what'll come out of it, but please pass this on to anyone you think it might be useful to just join this session or let people know about the free consultations. Just, it, you know, we, we, um, they're really useful for people. They're really, really useful. And again, whether it's us at Shift or something else that works for you, we will. I've recommended people do bright line eating on the consults before, you know, if they come to me and I don't think they quite need our level of support. So we're kind of all doing this together. So I think that's all I have. Tosca, do you have anything else? I had one more thing, which I'm just dropping in the chat this very moment. Um, I, in case you guys mm -hmm. wanted to continue hearing some different stories, more of Amanda sharing, and some of our clients um, have been interviewed on podcasts. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is our Shift Media page. And um, feel free to click on that. And there's just a bunch of different things that you could listen to if you wanted to, um, you know, hear more of this. Uh, you can hear Amanda share her story a couple more times on some of these. And it's, it's good every time. So um, you're welcome to join with that. And uh, thanks, for, thanks for coming on, everyone. Really good to see you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, please reach out if you have questions. Take care. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.